<laughs> Maddie Massiello, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me, Sean. I got to tell you, as an Italian, being on a Paisano's podcast <laughs> is really up my alley. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah, perfect fit. And I know <laughs> that it's probably a little bit weird. You're usually on the other side of the podcast production space, meaning you're not being recorded. You're doing the recording. I know. It, this is crazy to be behind a microphone and to <laughs> not be like checking levels and all of that stuff. So I appreciate you taking the reins of that for me today, Sean. I'm this doing my best. I'm not a professional, but the levels <laughs> seem good right now. Good, good. Um, yeah, and, you're sounding uh, good to me. Great. Good. Thank you. I may uh, turn over some of the production reins to you at some <laughs> point. Um, so Maddie, it's really great to talk to you about podcasting on a podcast, pretty meta conversation that I'm sure we'll have today. Totally meta. But um, I wanted to have you on because I've been thinking a lot as I've done this production myself. Um, and of course, just in the way that audio content kind of fits in the space of um, the grander internet content and the things that just kind of go out every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've often thought that like audio is sort of that content that sounds, that seems like it's an outdated thing, right? Like it was the first of the traditional media sure. or the second, mm -hmm. I should say there was print and then there was audio and, and everyone had a radio set and they would, we hear about our, our parents' generation gathering around the radio for shows and things. And now sure. I feel like I'm doing that in some ways. Like I can't wait for certain podcast episodes to drop. Um, why do you feel like audio content is thriving the way it is today? Sure. And I mean, you're right in the sense that audio was first. And I think of the way that media is iterated today, it usually starts with audio. Mm -hmm. um, I think in large part, that's because of different platforms. It's a pretty easy one to manipulate. Um, but I remember going back, I interned for a radio show in college and um, even then it was like seven or eight years ago and I still had to explain to everybody I knew what a podcast was. Yeah. Um, and now you don't really have to do that. It's kind of everywhere. Um, and I think with podcasting, they've really met people where they are. Um, and when you think about older media too, um, you could say, you know, podcasting is to radio as streaming services is to cable. Mm -hmm. You know, you've taken this kind of media that really only a few people got to produce and distribute and you've kind of turned it on and you've kind of turned it on its head um, and made it on demand for everybody. Um, you made it less regulated. Um, and I think in the case of podcasting, that goes even further because now, uh, by and large, it's free. Um, you know, you could pay for, you know, a Spotify premium subscription. But if you really wanted to, usually you can find this kind of content for free. Um, so you've made it that much more accessible. Um, and again, you've just given it ways to um, manipulate and iterate in ways that I think other media isn't always able to do. Yeah. And it's interesting. Uh, it is free in some ways, but of course, we're seeing more and more opportunities for um, content creators to have paywalls around certain content and in some cases around all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but also the way that ads show up in podcasts um, has really, uh, I think, revolutionized how um, local advertisers can put their ads out there, um, how they can drop into uh, podcast episodes rather than just being read by, by the host. Um, and do you think that that's just kind of continuing to push this content forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think when you integrate ads um, then you have like a whole other interest share in this media that you're making mm -hmm. um, and i think podcasting too because anybody can do it and i do say anybody can do it not everybody should do it um but because anybody can do it um i think i don't even know where i was going with that hold on a second um yep all right and so i think because anybody can do it you've seen ways where you know, podcasting, the goal isn't always subscription numbers. Um, I think for a lot of people, the goal is advertising and making money. Um, but I've worked on shows where the goal was just to be like an internal resource for companies, for their employees. I've worked on shows where the podcast was just, you know, a marketing tool for something bigger. Um, and I think even you think about um, 
like at the end of an HBO show, how they advertise their own podcast to do like a deeper dive into that content. Mm -hmm. Um, So in that way, too, I think podcasting can be used as like an addendum to the thing, not just the thing. Um, And I think advertisers can have been made aware of that and have really tried to capitalize on that uh, on that space. Yeah. And I think about like when I create podcasts for my clients um, in the marketing world, it's kind of nice because it, by recording one episode, you get multiple pieces of content. Of course, you get the podcast itself, but then the video and clips that you can put on social media and the transcripts that you can put into writing that search engines can read. Um, and, and then you can build a blog post out of it and just sure. all of those things. Um, and it makes me think of sort of the early days of blogging when not everyone had a blog, but now, right. uh, and I absolutely it seemed exclusive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it's not anymore. Um, and I'm talking about both blogging and podcasting and, and as someone who just like started this up on my own, um, you know, I know that I'm lumped in, but, but what do you feel is problematic about the fact that sort of anybody can just do this and put content out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever they want. Totally. And I mean, like anything else on the internet, I think it's up to you to kind of be discerning. But I think there are um, a few specifics with audio and with podcasting um, that kind of make it uniquely hard. Um, I think the first is that it's really easy to conflate somebody with a microphone as to being an authority figure on a subject. Um, and just whoever's the loudest voice in the room. And I think that goes beyond, um, you know, I think most people are pretty um, skeptical online of what people are, mm-hmm. people are saying, but I don't know if that's really totally extended to the way that we vet podcasts. Um, and at the same time, now, you know, it it's not hard to make a quality podcast either with the type of gear Um, and supplies available to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that has made it an interesting challenge to weed out. I also think audio itself is pretty intimate. Um, So I think that's a double-edged sword, but on the, on the negative side, um, I think it's really easy to kind of create deeper parasocial relationships in that way too. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you are thinking about shows that are, you know, personality driven um, not so much news, but, you know, kind of, you know, this is what my life looks like. I'm going to talk about it. Um, I think it's really easy to think that all of that a is true. Um, I've worked on shows that are just kind of lifestyle and, you know, most things are exaggerated or made up just to be funny. And that's not to say that that's bad. Um, but just understanding where that content is coming from, um, and kind of being the judge of that is also really important. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's so interesting what you said about audio being an intimate form of content. Um, what do you what do you mean by that? Or where do you arrive at that? Yeah, I mean, if you go back to history, like you were talking about in traditional media and you think about radio, um, when I think about that, I, I guess I think about like fireside chats with FTR yeah. and like all of a sudden you had the president president of the United States through this new media, like in your living room. And now with podcasting, and I think especially with post pandemic podcasting, like not only is that subject or that show in your living room, but you're in theirs. Um, and I think that could be a really good thing. And that really deepens um, the relationship that you can have with your media. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a double edged sword um, that I think, especially now, um, again, in the post-pandemic world, is like even trickier to navigate. Trickier to navigate in a post-pandemic world because we got closer to it. I think so. Yeah. And again, it just you know, I don't I don't have numbers in front of me, but if I think about how many shows really took off because people were kind of creating that connection um, during the pandemic, um, I think you know there's a there's a lot of layers to that, and it's interesting to kind of dissect how we got there and what people were craving. And how podcasts specifically delivered that. I think some of the best writers in the world, um, many of whom are employed at the New York Times, uh, (laughs) are able to get their voice through on the page. But um, I love what you're saying, because now I'm just thinking out loud about like when I read 
a story, I'm hearing it in my own voice, even if there is personality attached to it that's not mine. But when I'm listening to Michael Barbaro, you know, he's got a very specific personality totally. and a very yep. specific delivery that does feel very intimate. And, and I'm sort of like, what do you mean he wouldn't know who I am if I showed up in, in the studio? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, I, um, you know, we receive um, emails a lot from just yeah. people who, you know, have sometimes they're great suggestions, sometimes they're fact checks, you know, things like that. And then every now and then Michael will reply to the person and I just... Um, I like to think about that person just sending the, a, an email to a general daily like drop. And then all of a sudden you have Michael Bobaro in your inbox. Like that's pretty funny. Um, so in that I way, wonder... he's fulfilling the parasocial relationship, but um, he's allowed right. to do that. Right. I wonder, uh, does, do his emails have like lots of spaces in between words? And <laughs> no, no, it's pretty, it's pretty straight laced. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. Um, why is it, I mean, there, so there's lots of, audio content out there. Um, and of course, setting music aside and the way that we access the entire library mm -hmm. of music that exists in the world. Um, thinking about uh, narrative audio content or conversational audio content, why do you think it's podcast? I mean, is it the accessibility? Is it the the variety? Like, or is it just all those things? Like, why, is, why are podcasts the thing that are just seem to be continuously, I won't even say exploding because it's just like so sustained. Sure. Uh, I mean, that's a good question. I think the answer to that is like a yes, all of the above. Yeah. Um, I think to really understand it, you probably have to look at Serial, um, which mm -hmm. was kind of the biggest boom and what kind of set, you know, turn podcasting on its head and what made it so known to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of was a, a you know, starting point for true crime, which I am sure is one of the biggest genres in podcasting that you can have. Um, and the way that audio itself lends its, well, the way that audio lends itself to storytelling, um, you can, you know, again, music aside, just in terms of sound design, in terms of field tape, you know, really meeting the listener where they are and giving um, audible cues as to, hey, this is the direction that a story is moving. Um, you know, we always say with our composition team, it's not so much making somebody feel something, it's just enhancing what they should already be feeling. Um, and I think that's um, a really, a really special way that audio does that too. Um, I'm thinking now of an example for The Daily, I think probably a year and a half ago when the um, country hit 1 million COVID deaths. Um, and we asked for listener voicemail uh listener voicemails uh they sent it to the email um about you know mourning the loss of um somebody that they knew from mm -hmm. covid and it really just kind of we like the sound designers did a really great job of weaving in those voices all throughout the episode um kind of making like a rain of these listeners who were heartbroken who were angry who were coming at it from all different perspectives mm -hmm. um and it was really heartbreaking to listen to but i think there's a reason that um, you're going to listen to that daily episode rather than read an article yeah. um, just because it takes it so much further. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, one of the things I wanted to ask is there are so many different styles of podcasts, not only in, in, you know, the, the content itself or the genre, but in the way that it's delivered there, there are, um, you know, storytelling with, mm -hmm. with music and with a variety of voices and, and even characters, there are straightforward interviews like this. Um, there are, are one person deliveries, um, there, and there's, you know, everything sort of in between. I, I know you don't have like stats right in front of you, but do mm -hmm. you have a sense for what is most popular or sort of what resonates most with the listening audience? I think... Again, I'm going to say it depends yeah. and everything lives on a spectrum. So I'm sorry that I can't give you a clear answer. But I think what successful podcasts do well is just understanding their audience um, and figuring out what they like and figuring out what is my role in this landscape and how am I going to give it to my listeners. Um, like I personally prefer just shorter podcasts. Um that's because I'm probably more of a passive listener. And I think a lot of people are too. 
Um, I think that's another way that podcasting can be really successful because you think about the ways that people are listening and it's on their commute. It's while they're doing chores. Um, so mm -hmm. it's like, how do we even subliminal subliminally add this into somebody's like daily habit? Mm -hmm. Um, but it could also be, you know, really active as well. Um, you can, uh, like a book club, there are podcasting clubs. I'm sure you see yeah. that on TV. That's the whole point of, uh, murders, murders in the building. Is that the show? Only murder. That's the yeah. whole point of only murders in the building. Um, and so that's funny, again, in the way that podcasting like finds itself in other media, too. Um, but so, yeah, I think, uh, again, the medium lends itself to so many different things. That's a good thing. I don't know if there is one larger preference than another, um, but it's just how do you how do you best utilize that for what you're trying to do? Yeah. And that that totally makes sense. Um, and uh I guess if that's maybe we should just end the conversation if you like shorter, <laughs> shorter <laughs> yeah. <I can. laughs> but um no yeah and honestly like as you're saying that too I'm thinking about like different times of day or different situations like totally. I love saving up certain podcasts mm -hmm. or certain episodes of a podcast for a road trip um Me and too. there are, are some that like I have to listen to every day um and under like as part of my morning routine. yeah it's like a compulsion yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. I think news lends itself to that really well, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think something like serial or true crime, again, you're so invested. There's an element of suspense. Um, it evokes even deeper emotions because you're scared and you're yeah. trying to make sense of the world around you. Um, so I think that also forms a habit. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting all the different ways that you can utilize it. Yeah. I think the last time, th this last season of Serial, I listened to in its entirety on a dry, on a six hour drive recently where I just like, I thought I'd listen to an episode or two and then put some music on and then find some, no, no, it was the, <laughs> the entire just season. the whole time. And that kind of, it can take a toll on you too, especially because yeah. if I'm listening to a true crime podcast, if I'm on a road trip, I'm probably driving through like small towns and rural yeah. roads. I'm extra scared. Um, now like my whole life is just like painted a picture of, you know, um, the, the same backdrop that yeah. these accounts were. And so it's just, it's, it's funny, um, how, you know, life imitates art. Totally. Um, so we've talked and danced around this, this idea of, of news and obviously the role of, of podcasting, especially at the New York times is to deliver news in, in a variety of different ways. Um, there's, you know, very straightforward, like the headlines or the daily. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are almost what I would think of as like news magazine type, like serial, um, totally. or documentary style. Um, and I'm curious because we've seen Twitter just mm -hmm. become all, but like decimated at this point, but that was really a place um, and I say was for myself, I'm sure it still is for a lot of people, but that was really a place where a lot of discourse happened around the headlines and around, um, mm -hmm. the news of the day. Um, and with that kind of all but going away, um, and nothing to really replace it, um, have there been conversations in the studio or at the company around whether the evolution of audio content might include some social integrations? Sure. I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, but I'm so low on the totem pole at the New York <laughs> times that I don't know what the company is talking about in that regard. Um, uh, but yes, I think that in terms of news, um, it can be tricky because like you said, if you're kind of looking for this two way dialogue, like if that's, if you're trying to, you know, build those relationships, um, the, the straightforward news, the straightforward news podcasts aren't set up to give you that. And that's mm -hmm. for, that's with good reason. They're just trying to give you the news. Um, so I don't know in terms of like standalone audio content beyond, um, like the New York times we have, um, our app that uh, has all of our in-house content and then also um, some exclusive shows like the headlines, um, like our culture shorts. Um, and I think that has proven to be pretty successful too. Um, if for nothing else, just finding like a one-stop shop of all these shows. And then um, if, really like if you really like the daily, you're probably going to like headlines. 
it's all for you. It's prepackaged. Um, it gives you a playlist every day of um, what you're looking for. So I think that has been a really good utilization. I think that's probably just unique to the times. I'm not sure um, what other kind of platforms are able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I'm kind of more interested in the ways that um, current platforms and not just necessarily news, uh, but social media platforms integrate audio within their own existing space. Um, Cause I think that that has a lot of future ahead of itself too. Yeah. And I mean, I asked in, in an intentionally vague way because I don't know even what that would look like. Um, exactly. And I think yeah. the only example of an audio focused social media platform was clubhouse uh and that that came and went um in in the blink of an eye but i wonder if there's totally. something to learn from that yeah i mean clubhouse i was not cool enough to get invited to clubhouse back <laughs> in the day and then once it was like not exclusive nobody was on it so it didn't matter um yeah. but i don't know if i am necessarily the audience for something like that i think for me and this is like Clubhouse specifically and just forums specifically in general. Like if I wanted to get in a room with strangers and listen to them, like get on their soapbox, I'd probably just like log on to Facebook and I don't want to do that to begin with. Um, <laughs> right, right. But so I'm sure if I'm sure there's a way to do it in an interesting and like well executed way. Um, but I think about the ways not like standalone audio, social media, but just the way that podcasting is sort of like inserted itself mm -hmm. in TikTok, for mm -hmm. example, like is podcast clips. And I don't subscribe to any of them, but I am interested in them. Yeah. And it's it, obviously they've got me because my algorithm keeps me coming back. Um, like as a as a Bills fan, it's really hard to start to like the Kelsey brothers, but they're everywhere. <laughs> like that's all that's all I see. That's all I hear is their podcast and they make some good points. And I'm like, damn, yeah. I really wish that this just didn't fall into my lap, but it did. Um, and I think, you know, there's there's a negative to that, too, where it's like everything I've ever heard Joe Rogan say I've heard against my will. Like, I did not seek that out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just coming to me. Um, and again, hopefully, you know, you get the algorithm that weeds all that out. Um, but so it's interesting how um kind of what a symbiotic relationship that that is with other forms of media because you have shows that can market itself on that platform and then you have the platform who is getting a lot of engagement from that content that they have nothing to do with mm -hmm. um so i think that's probably the way forward for podcasting specifically in that's, kind of the yeah. social landscape uh so that's making me think of so many things. First on the list, of course, is that we have to introduce um, Josh Allen and Taylor Swift. Oh, I oh my God, I know. What? I mean, I like you thought we in Buffalo, we all thought it was a big deal that he started da dating Haley Steinfeld. And then yeah. what like shocker, the Chiefs one up us. Who would have guessed? Like uh, it's so it's frustrating. It but yeah, I'm with you. Frustrating. I ship it. I'm sure we play the Chiefs, I think, later this season. So if she's there, we'll just see what we can do. And yeah, I'm into it. Um, all right. Great. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll work on that plan after. But um, uh, one of the things about Clubhouse that was interesting, and I, I'm sorry you didn't get that early invite. Um, <laughs> Me too. And it was what the not, heck? Like, it was, it was not. I didn't it, know you it, back then, Sean. It would have been better. I know. And you didn't miss anything. But I will <laughs> say... Um, the only thing that was kind of, um, interesting was that, yeah, you're listening to most of the t time, like perfect strangers. Sometimes somebody that you knew was hosting mm -hmm. a session, right. um, in which case you could sort of raise your hand like you do on a zoom call. Um, and they could bring you into the conversation to either ask a question or make a point the way that almost li like live radio does in some sure. ways. Um, but the interface was more like social media. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and, uh, just, I mean, just again, sort of thinking out loud and, and as you're talking about, you know, ways that, that audio kind of develops, um, God, it would be great to have the opportunity to to get called into the room uh, by a podcast host that I love listening to, or or on a show um, where I could contribute in some sort of live fashion. Um, you know, I could always go back and listen to a recording, right. but um, but yeah, I, I think there's lots of fun ways to sort of think about how that evolves. 
Definitely. But I think I think that comes back to, too, if you are on a platform where you really only know one person, um, like I'm interested from your perspective, like if we're trying to foster like Paisanos, like what does that mean in terms of, you know, jumping into a conversation with strangers, especially in an age where like most people I know, I, I hate talking on the phone. I'm not if you're a stranger and you're calling me. I'm not picking up. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah. why why would I join this forum with you? And I, I don't yeah. know the answer to that, but I think it's an interesting question. No, the, and that's a really good point. I, in a recent conversation for this podcast, um, Kate Lindsay, who's the writer for um, the Embedded newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, talked about how more and more people are just lurking now on social media. Um, right. Even the comment section is going quiet um, on a lot of platforms. And so um, those parasocial relationships are just getting more polarized, I guess, and we're not using it socially the way that right. we once did. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I don't know how to fix that, but um, it <laughs> well, is definitely me, a unique problem. Yeah. For me, this is the fix, honestly. Like this yeah. podcast um, is a way to connect with people that I know peripherally or I know because I follow them on social media, but mm -hmm. not really in a lot of other ways. Um, and so it gives me an opportunity to have these conversations with really interesting people um, about all this stuff. And, you know, maybe it's a selfish endeavor, but um, anybody can create a podcast these days. So here we no, are. No, I know. I, I, I don't want to lump you into all that chunk. No, I think, I, I think... I'm lumping myself in. Absolutely. <laughs> I think as long as you have a point of view, um, and again, you have, you're, you're somewhat qualified to talk about whatever it is you decided to talk about. Um, it's just like, I have, I know people who have started like health and wellness podcasts who have no background in any of that. Yeah. Um, they're just like kind of telling people how to help quote unquote their body. Like that to me is dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I think, you know, it's not to say that I don't think that we should be having, you know, these conversations. And I think talking about relationship building and um, the internet, which nobody can escape from, like it's a huge part of our lives and it's still some, in some ways is kind of talked about as like this new thing where it's mm -hmm. like, it's been here, we've been living in it. It's already like affected us in a lot of ways. Um, like how has that happened for you? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, well, I don't blame that's you. Why, that's why I'm in, I'm bringing in, you know, experts <laughs> who are not me uh, to talk about these things. I do think um, we're all affected by um, things without even really thinking about it. We are affected by podcasting. And I really appreciate your perspective on how and on ways that I am not thinking about and, and ways that, you know, um, friends and, and people who are listening don't think about either. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it can go beyond just podcasting and just when you like talk about audio in general. Um, when I was thinking about different kind of like social integrations, weirdly enough, one of the ways or one of the tools that I think does that well is actually Hinge. Um, mm, yeah. Like, I, I think there's a there you can answer any of the, the prompts instead of, you know, typing, you can send your voice through audio. Yeah. And especially in a digital landscape, I think there's only so many ways you can really get your personality clearly across. I think that's a really good one, too. Um, so, again, it's not just podcasts. It's how do we kind of use voice and use sound and music and design and all of that stuff to kind of really enrich in the media that we're already consuming. Um, yeah, I was I was listening intently and I, I don't have a follow-up question to that, but that so that's a really great point I'm just letting oh, that like sink in a little yeah, bit yeah let it let it sink in yeah but, um like it, yeah it's all it's all funny well it goes back to the point you made earlier about voice being an intimate um media or exactly. audio being yeah. an intimate medium um and and how can we utilize sort of the power of that um hinge a great example of that for sure um what are you listening to these days? What What's in your podcast feed? <laughs> you know, I was worried you were going to ask that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a slave to the machine. So okay. any New York Times podcast is what I will promote. Um, well, and I have the app downloaded. It is a great app. You're absolutely right. Um, and it's generally spitting out all of the, the news magazine stuff. I love it. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's again, it's just an example of like meeting people where they are. I think the Times is uh, it has so much institutional knowledge and research and background. Um, so they're able to do that really well. Um, mm. So if you're not a subscriber and you don't have the app, you should. <laughs> Anything particularly interesting that you've worked on lately? Um, any any episodes or um, particular shows that you uh, really want to um, or are excited it, are out in the world? Yeah, I mean, if I'm thinking about the app specifically, um, there is a fun series um, that are just cultural shorts, and they're like ten minute episodes, and you hear from reporters um, about you know what they're listening to, what they're reading, um, all that kind of stuff. But the ones I really like are the cooking ones. Um, so we'll bring in people from New York Times Cooking who will share recipes. So there's a whole series that is, I think, entitled No Recipe Recipes, where it's like, we're not measuring anything. It's just, here's what you need, mm -hmm. and we're going to make a great dish. Um, and that kind of involves sound, too, because I think we set up their producers with um, like recording kits at home to actually you know, capture the sounds of their kitchen. Um, so it kind of really puts you into that zone um and i'm just i'm just a big foodie anyway so i like those yeah. a lot i get a lot of cooking ideas from that show and that platform so i'm, I'm very appreciative of that cool that one has not come across my feed yet so i'm excited to listen to it yeah um, dig in yeah the idea of sending those those audio kits also um i mean you know this is a pretty low budget production so far um but uh we do almost exclusively remote conversations mm -hmm. um and i often wonder there's a podcast that i listen to with esther perel where she's doing um therapy sessions with people on the other end that are in all, uh, you know any part of the world and they sound like they're in a professional studio and I have to imagine that they're being sent something like a kit just in terms of like getting into the weeds of the production piece. How does sure. that work? Yeah. I mean, so we here keep a pretty healthy stock of kits um, and it just kind of depends on, you know, what you're trying to capture. Like if you're a producer going out in, in the field, you have a lot more gear and a lot more specialized gear than if you are just somebody who's recording one podcast at home. Um, and then, you know, we send a return label and they'll just ship it back to the office. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think again, when we go back to the way things have evolved, um, just the, the creation of a USB microphone that you can plug into your computer, um, mm -hmm. is huge. And, and honestly, that has made my job a lot easier. That has made the yeah. job of post-production engineers a lot easier, um, and has made it less intimidating, I think, too. Um, for people to have these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, I have the first, um, this is an audio medium, but I started with uh, the cheap Yeti microphone. The <laughs> Yeti. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, like that, I think got so many people into that um, medium. And then, uh, you know, I've been able to find some, um, handheld recording equipment that's sort of like great for totally. interviews and honestly we're getting to a point where the phone really does a pretty good quality like on the street type of interview the phone totally does and you can even just buy even if you wanted to go one step beyond your phone little like lav mics mm -hmm. um you know i'm thinking about tiktok again too and all of those series where it's just people like in Washington Square Park and they'll put the microphone like a little lav mic in your face and it's like tell me what you do for a living and how much you make um <laughs> so you can't really escape it anywhere um but yes it's it's incredibly accessible um there's a price point for everything depending on yeah. what you're trying to do um so it, it's funny audio it's it's really it's really taken over everywhere well, and, and, um, you know, having been in journalism for my whole career, one of the things that gets harped on us from college is that even in a video production, audio is actually the most important element. It's one thing to see a grainy video. It's almost like your mind can kind of like fill in the gaps a little bit when things look fuzzy or blurry, but when you can't hear what someone is saying or all the nuances of, of what's happening in the atmosphere totally. around them, that's when you really miss a lot. Um, a hundred percent. And I, you know, I think we'd be remiss to talk about like how audio has evolved without 
mentioning video and like mm-hmm. what that's done for different platforms in terms of whether or not you have your whole episode's video or it's just clips online. Um, but yes, I, I'm glad you said that because my philosophy, I think the philosophy of a lot of people on our team is that the audio comes first mm-hmm. and video is always second. Um, and that becomes really hard. Like if you're already an established show with established, you know, production workflows, Mm -hmm. um, like video is a whole different beast. Um, and so I think it's important, you know, audio first pot or audio first video second. Um, and to not like treat them as the same Mm -hmm. because they're not. Um, one of my favorite documentaries is called, I like killing flies. And it was about a, um, uh, a, a man who had a tiny little restaurant on, I believe, the lower west side of Manhattan. Um, it's still there, uh, although it's moved into um, much more refined uh, sort of shared space. Um, but uh, the guy is extremely interesting. He has a menu with like 150 items on it. And it's just like him and one other person in a kitchen, the size of my desk here. Um, so it was a really interesting premise. The person who made the documentary was an NYU student and he used a lav mic exactly as you just described. Oh yeah. Putting it in his face or near the pan, uh, just to get the audio. And there was something like really beautiful about the fact Mm -hmm. that it caught every sound around it, whether they were in the car rolling restaurant equipment across, uh, Lexington Avenue, um, whatever they were doing, it caught everything. Um, and you know, there's a time and a place for that, obviously, but, um, that just made me think when you were talking about, you know, sticking a lav mic in someone's face. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, even, I mean, they're, those are tiny little guys, but they are mighty. Um, and in that way too, uh, we, you can go back to how everything kind of lives in this like dichotomy, like that can be dangerous because they're pretty, you could be recorded and not know it. Like they're very discreet. Um, but they do pick up a lot of sound as if the person is aware that they're being recorded. Um, so I, I, again, I think it all, it is all a double-edged sword. So by doing this job and, and, um, you know, thinking about the pros and cons and everything that we, um, experience differently in life, the more that this progresses and the more that it becomes, um, you know, part of the internet that we're all using every second of the day. Um, are there things that you've just become more in tune with? Are there things that you've learned along the way? Um, or even just specific anecdote anecdotes that, that you think are relevant to sort of share, um, in this conversation? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, how much of that is specific to podcasting. I think, again, um, if we're just looking about the negative side of things, I think a lot of that has to come, like there's some sense of personal responsibility when it comes to that. So I think in that way, like the the good of podcasting and the way that um, it can really bring communities together. Um, I used to work on a show um, where the listeners were incredibly devoted um, they had a, a fan club. Um, we would do live shows and like these people, they were getting together as if it was like a family reunion every year. Um, and on, it, it's pretty touching. Um, and so I think it, that's a, a common thread. Um, and you just find whatever it is like unique about your own human experience and try to find people who have the same kind of like niche interests as you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can really, really bring you together in that way. Just trying Did that to answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, okay. Thoroughly. Well, Maddie, I really appreciate your time and talking about this stuff. I am fascinated by it. I'm obsessed oh, with, with the podcast world. Um, and, uh, I don't understand people who aren't, um, you know, fortunately by doing this little project, uh, my mom is like now interested in podcasting a little bit. So, you know, I, I changed one person. Um, but, uh, I just, um, I really appreciate being able to have this conversation because not only am I learning a lot from it, but I think it's so fascinating to learn from somebody who, as we said at the the top, like is often on the other side of it and thinks about the production piece, um, and why this stuff is just so popular. Yeah, absolutely. I had the similar experience where it took my dad a really long time to know what a podcast was. Um, and now I, I think he listens to them on his own. They're mostly probably Bill's 
recaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I like to think he listens to some of the stuff I do too. So <laughs> well, you can tell him that I had Matt Perino on this show early on and you absolutely, know, he's I will. A perfect. So maybe he'll like that episode, if not this one. Yes. Well, I, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so too. Maddie, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Sean. And thank you for letting me talk on a microphone because it's nice to be on the other side for once. A very high quality microphone. Thank you.